Wrapping up things tonight at UD Arena. What a Friday night it has been. Patrick Hamler, Mark Schein, back with you from the University of Dayton Arena. And we bring you now uh, the coverage of Richmond Heights taking on Rushi. And this was a game on its surface. Richmond Heights came in as a behemoth. One of the best teams, maybe in the whole state of Ohio, not just yep. Division Four, but Rushi gave them all they could handle tonight. Okay, raise your hand if you don't live in Shelby County and you thought Rushi would be ahead 37-35 with two minutes to go in the third quarter. And they were. They played extremely well today. Richmond Heights did turn it on end of the third quarter. Seven Rushi turnovers in the fourth quarter led to a lot of points for, for Richmond Heights, but great effort by Rushi today. We'll bring the highlights of that right now. It was a decent start for Rushi. You wanted to tramp down the offense as much as you possibly can, and it would be a physical one. Even the lineup starting is physical there for Rushi as they get started here. Braden Cordonier with the whirling dervish attack to the basket. Rushi was strong on the offensive boards tonight. Felix Francis cleans this up, kicks it out to Braden Monin. He's wide open for three, uh, one of their three-pointers in the first half. Well, they did a really nice job on the boards. They won the battle of the boards today. They gave up 15 steals that went the other way, but offensive and defensive rebound and went the way of Rushi. There's Hayden Quinter with the Euro step for two. They were, they were able to find a lot of opportunities for penetration and getting to the basket. Here's another opportunity for Quinter off the dime from Zane Shappy. And then we're going to see a nice drive coming up here by Vince Borchers. Able to cut inside in the pass to Quinter. Quinter had 10 of Rushi's first 17 points. In fact, you heard the fans from Richmond Heights going, don't let 12 get the ball. <laughs> yeah, Quentin and, and Monner played just so well today. Those two juniors had great basketball games, but a lot of the Raiders contributed to the other end of the floor as well. Monner getting the hoop and harm on that particular play and then getting the ball down low off the pass, able to sink that one in. Monner would finish with 19 points. So second half action now, and Monner... Hitting the three right there, tying this one up at 31. It was back and forth. Richmond Heights had a lead going into halftime, but Rushi uh, keeping it close, tying it up at 33. And then Francis here is going to lay it up, putting Rushi up by two. And you mentioned, Ian, they yep. were up by two with two minutes left in the third quarter. They were up 37-35, and then Richmond Heights just was able to turn it on. They got going full court. They got a couple of three balls that went for them, and things just got away from Rushi. But for a long time, they were in the basketball game. That was Quinter with that basket. And then Francis here ending the Richmond Heights run. 47-42 Spartans, though, at this point. Now here's Quinter driving, getting the end one. Nice concentration. Rushi kept in it as much as they could, throwing punch after punch. Uh, Richmond Heights just a bit too much here, even the three-pointer, but it's all, and it's nine-point game now this time for the Spartans. Well, and then, then Richmond Heights made free throws in the fourth quarter late, too. They did not miss one when they got to the one-and-one -one situation, and that helped seal it as well. That put back by Monin, dropped the lead to seven, and then he drives and scores, but the lead is still nine. Richmond Heights gets the win in this one, 66-51, to 51, the final, and you see the big thing, 22 Rushi turnover, Richmond Heights scoring 29 points off of those. That was really the difference in the game. When, when Richmond Heights was able to turn up the pressure defensively in the second quarter and again in the fourth quarter, then that's when they really got going. Um, we knew what the play was coming in. Everybody in the community believed in us, and the way the defense, of that, the defense we play, we knew we could handle anybody in the state. So just get out there and play like dogs, and that's what we did. And then they hit some late threes that were big and just couldn't come back from that. 22 turnovers didn't help you very much because every time you turn it over, you know, they scored off of it. And it just, it, it just did it feel like you had to push the thing up to go get what you got out of tonight? Yeah, the turnovers didn't help us at all. And we knew coming in that we had to limit their transition points. and. I didn't do that very well with all them turnovers and then them scoring off of them. How much did emotion, you know, their coach just talked about warning his own players about the emotional advantage you guys would have. How much emotional advantage did you have? And how was that like playing with that tonight? The crowd was amazing. Every time you looked up, you had the whole, all the crowd. Everybody was standing up, cheering for us. You hit me, make a big shot. Every, the whole gym was erupting. It gave us a big advantage and just, it just helped us tremendously. Brady, can you talk about just the journey for you guys of the season and just, you know, the, the community, like you said, the crowd, just the way you needed them to rally around you guys, you know, from, from what you guys have been through in the adversity and, and the way you guys were able to come together. If you can just speak on, on that as a whole and what it's meant to you guys this season. Well, not having Dave was a big factor on us. And we just needed to push through it, get through the adversity, and 
just be dogs. He wanted us to be dogs. He was talking to Coach Cardano before the season, before it happened. And he knew that we were going to have this type of season. And he wanted us to be dogs and just play 100% all the time, 110% actually. One hundred percent. I mean, I had two cramps in my calves at the end of the game. We were just all gassed at halftime. I I couldn't catch my breath. I was dog tired, and I'm sure everybody else was too because everybody's panting in the locker room. George, did we have to uh, make a general comment on that particular question? Yeah. Um, you know, coming in the, this week practice. These guys really bought into we can play with them. No matter who we're playing against, you know, one thing's for sure all year is we're gonna fight, we're gonna put together a game plan, and we're gonna guard our tails off. And you know, these guys, all of them, you know, these two and Braylon and Xavier and Zane, just had one scrimmage. We didn't do anything. You know, you're right. You know, after the baseball season was over, they went right into their summer stuff in baseball, and we had one scrimmage. We had you know freshmen and sophomores playing in the summer league, incoming freshmen playing in the summer league games, and we had one scrimmage. And we knew after four quarters of that one scrimmage what we had and what they needed to do, and they they figured it out very very quickly, and it just became. In that dog mentality, and, and you know, we say it after every time out. So, they showed a lot of fight, a lot of grit, and through a very, very emotional season. Um, I told my wife, you know, I, I, I don't want to end tonight. I'm ready for uh, things to.
Coach, can you speak just on the overall, the, the support? I mean, an incredible showing from, you know, the crowd tonight and, and the energy you guys were able to feed off that. I guess just speak on that and how you guys as coaching staff and a team really were able to uh, utilize that in, in your play. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, we told them if, if you come out early and you throw the first punch, you're going to have the entire UD arena rooting for you. Um, and I think maybe half of it was was Rushi. Um, but, you know, our, our community is a pretty special community. It, I mean, it's just so much fun. They've, they've shown an immense amount of support to us this entire year. Um, have filled gymnasiums for four and a half months. And, and you know, shown the Borchers family again help them out in any way. Um, there, it, like I said, it's just a special place. And, and if you don't live there, and there's many communities up around our area that are, that are like that, Fort Army, Minster, Jackson Center, there, you know, it's, it just, it's just a special place to live. And, and um, you know, when these athletes perform the way they do and, and work as hard as they do, that's the only thing that they can ask. I mean, I don't know how many times I've had parents, you know, that don't even have kids in the program saying, oh, man, you guys are fun to watch. I don't know how they play that hard. Those guys just play hard, and that's what it's about. And that's what we tried to convey to these guys before the season is play as hard as you can, and the rest will take care of itself. So the Rooster Raiders wrapping up their season. Obviously, their season not starting in the way that they wanted with the passing of Dave Borchers and uh, coach and players touched on that and maybe not ending quite the way that they wanted to. But uh, there's a lot of encouragement. There's a lot of positivity in Rooster because they think that they're going to be good for a couple years yet. Hey, listen to that press conference. That, that was really a classy press conference. There's a lot of really classy people in that room right there, and, and you are correct. Basketball skills in the future, they've got some guys that are coming. But when you talk about that in your community, that's pretty positive too. And, of course, Coach Cordonier is still the interim head coach. They haven't officially made him the head coach yet. You have to think with the season that he's had, with the run that they've had in the tournament, this is a this is a pretty good tryout if he wanted to be a head coach. And he expressed interest that if they'll have him, he wants to be here for at least a couple of years. And if he wants to do that good, good for him, the baseball program is outstanding. As we saw a year ago, it's going to be really good again this year. And it's a difficult way to end your basketball season, but a lot of positive things going on in that community right now. Yeah, indeed. Baseball starts Monday for Rushi. They'll try to defend their uh, their state title in baseball. So still plenty to look forward to athletically for the Rushi Raiders. Well, the Division Four state championship is set. Richmond Heights will take on Crestview. It's a rematch of their state semifinal from 2019, which saw Crestview get the win over them on their way to a state title. And it was it was interesting thing the Richmond Heights coach was asked about that as far as how the players felt and his response was none of these guys were around back then that doesn't really matter to really talk about it it's, it's all brand new but Richmond Heights probably the fan base the coach looking for maybe a measure of revenge and feel like maybe they can get it against the Knights this year uh, the thing I would say there's two sides of this one is Crestview watch Rushi play and they know what you have to do to succeed against uh, that how you have to succeed against Richmond Heights Richmond Heights also knows, you know what, maybe we, we shouldn't just kind of come into the first quarter a little bit lackadaisical. Maybe we better come out and play all four quarters, too. It will be a good matchup coming up this weekend. It'll be on Sunday, and we'll have highlights and analysis following that contest as well. Well, tomorrow, stick around because we will have highlights and analysis of Ottawa Glandorf and their rematch against Columbus Afrocentric in the Division Three state semifinal. That should be a great one here at UD Arena. We'll be on after that one with analysis and highlights as well. And then we're all back to wrap it up Sunday for state championships. Crestview going for another state title. Maybe Ottawa Glandorf going for another state title as well. We'll be here for all of it. It should be fun. It should be a fun week. It'll be a great weekend, and Monday you wake up depressed because there's no high school basketball until next November. <laughs> and also because your bracket's probably busted well, in March that, Madness. Mm. That's a whole other <laughs> level of depression. We won't talk about that right now. That's going to wrap up our coverage here from UD Arena. We'll be back tomorrow for coverage of Ottawa Glandorf, Afrocentric. For Mark Shine, our entire WOSN staff, Ryan Shadowald, Zach Keith helping out with us here at UD Arena. I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long. We'll see you next time.